Hey guys, Eric Vasquez here from TeachMeToDesign.com and today is day 15 in our 30 tips in 30 days video series and that means we are officially halfway through. And so I've got something very special planned for you as I show you how you can turn any photo into a pencil sketch in Photoshop. All right, guys, as you can see here, I've got a photo open already in Photoshop, and uh, we're pretty much ready to go. Now, um, in this tutorial, as I mentioned, I'm going to be showing you how you can convert or change a photo into a, a pencil sketch using um, pretty much any photo, but this will work especially well with uh, photos of people. Uh, the first thing we're going to do here is make a copy of our original background there, which you can do by pressing Command-J or by simply dragging... Uh, or by simply dragging your layer down to the new layer option down here. Okay, once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and invert the image by pressing Command I on the keyboard. Um, another way to do this would be to come up to the image menu and go to Adjustments, Invert. All right, and then from there, we're going to actually convert this into a smart object. So hold down the Control key, click on the layer and choose convert to smart object. All right, next, let's change the blending mode to color dodge. All right, and you'll see you kind of lose it here, but that's okay. We're going to we're going to work on bringing this back. And we do that first by going up to filter, and we're going to apply a gaussian blur. Now, feel free to play around with the settings. I mean, it's going to vary a little bit depending on uh, what kind of image you're using. I think for this image, somewhere around 5 is going to look pretty good. Um, but one of the benefits of using a smart object here is that you can always kind of come back in and double click on the filter and it'll allow you to change it as opposed to using a normal uh, raster layer which, you know, once you apply a filter, that's pretty much it. You know, you have to go and do the whole thing again. So um, the next step here is we're going to come down to the adjustment layers menu and choose black and white and that's going to turn everything below this layer into a black and white uh, image. Okay, now we're going to make another copy of our original layer, bring it up to the top. Okay, and this time uh, what we're going to do actually is come up to Filter, uh, Filter Gallery, and go into the Stylize drop-down and choose Glowing Edges. Now again, this is something that you know can vary depending on the photo that you're using, but I think uh, you know, the settings that I'm using here are pretty good for this, somewhere around 2, 6, and you know, 4 or 5 or something like that would, would look pretty good. Alright, once you've done that, go ahead and press OK to accept the changes. And then, um, we're going to come down to the Adjustment Layer menu once again, um, but this time hold down the Alt Option key. And then click Black and White. Now this time it's going to ask you if you want to use the previous layer to create a clipping mask and go ahead and say yes. So now this is only going to affect this layer directly below. Okay, once you've done that, select your uh, stylized glowing edge layer right here and invert it once again, pressing Command I on the keyboard. And now change the blending mode of this to multiply. So you'll see that's kind of giving us more contrast and, and darkening the edges and it's already starting to look pretty cool. All right, so we're going to repeat this a third time by coming down to the background layer and making a copy and moving it to the top of the layer's palette. Go ahead and convert this to a smart object once again. And we're going to apply another blur, this time maybe a little bit more, another Gaussian blur. So I'm going to try maybe somewhere around 8 or 9 pixels this time, I think. And then do another uh, black and white adjustment layer like we did in the previous step and you want it to have a clipping mask. Now you can do this also, you know, if you don't come down to the adjustment menu and while you're holding the Alt Option key, um, you can always add it, you know, create a clipping mask afterwards just by uh, moving your mouse in between the two layers and then holding the Alt Option key. And you'll see, you know, the little cursor that kind of changes to a downward pointing arrow uh, just to indicate um, that you're, you know, about to make this into a clipping mask. All right, and then from there, uh, select the image and change this uh, to multiply. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is select this copy, the top copy, along with the black and white adjustment layer, 
and click on both of them while holding down the shift key and then press command G to put them into a group folder. Alright, now you can change the blending mode of this entire group folder to overlay. Okay, hopefully you're with me so far. And now, you know, we're almost done here with the effect, so the next thing that we're going to do is actually just apply a curves adjustment layer um, to the top of this stack here. And what you're going to do when you see this, um, you know, little, little graph or chart here, we're going to add two points, okay? And you'll see when I click on this first point in the middle, there's a, a setting on the bottom that says input and output. All right, so for the first point, we're going to put an input of about 165 and an output of 96, okay? Now, for the second, uh, for the second point here, I'm going to put in uh, 233 for the input and 162. Uh, for the output. Okay, there's something a little funky going on here, so you just have to play with it a little bit just to get, you know, um, kind of a sketchier effect. Um, but you can kind of see what's what's starting to happen here, and it, it looks pretty cool. Um, let me try that. See, if you go back to default here, you'll see how it looks. But again, you know, you can add these two points. And you know, feel free to play around with this too, you know, to get some different uh, different results. But the idea here is that, you know, we want to add more contrast to it to really push that kind of, um, you know, sketched look that we're going for. I think somewhere around there actually looks pretty cool. Okay, and then the last step here is to add one more adjustment layer, and it's going to be a hue saturation adjustment, okay? so. Once you've done that, make sure you check off this box here that says Colorize. And then for the hue, we're going to change it to 193 so that we get that kind of like blue uh, mechanical pencil look. All right, and then if you want to, you can add another adjustment layer for the levels just to kind of, you know, play around with the, the contrast here. Um, but as you can see, this is, you know, in just a matter of minutes, um, we've created this this cool uh, pencil sketch effect with a photo and all I'm gonna do now is select all of these layers and put them in a folder just so that I can turn it on and off and you guys can see the before and the after of this effect now let's go back for a second here to the um, the first copy that we started working on and if I come in because we made it a smart object you know you can you can play around with the blur setting still and see how it affects your photo which again is one of the nice features of using uh, smart objects here. So uh, you may wish to further, you know, change or modify some of the settings or filters that you've applied, um, just to see how it affects your image. But that's it, guys. I mean, that's that's the effect right there. I mean, this is a really cool uh, photo effect that you can apply and, and to give your stuff like a a nice hand drawn feel. And um, you know, it might be a little hard to tell here, but we actually have a little bit of texture on the background still to kind of you know, make it almost look a little bit like paper. So I hope that you guys have uh, found this video useful and hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you have, uh, please give us a like or feel free to ask us any questions, comments, or anything like that. And uh, sign up for our email list, guys, and let us know how we can help you design better. See you next time.